with my Hippocratic Oath. <laughs> I can stand it. To watch this movie would be a hundred percent torture for me. Therefore, I ask my beloved creator, director, and friend, Tom Six, and his sister, the wonderful producer Ilona Six to take over here. <coughs> to take over here. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm out of this. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Miss Ilona Six and Mr. Tom Six. Oh, good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Wow, eh? that's incredible. Eh? Man, man, this, this man is really cool. Uh, yeah, of course, it's uh, it's an, an honor to be here after the uh, the terrible banning. Eh? At the same time, uh, we were jumping from joy because this gave us an, an enormous amount of publicity. Eh? So that's that's pretty cool. We want to thank the the Fright Fest guys who are brilliant, our uh, distributor. And I uh, will let you in on a little secret, why they uh, unbent the film so suddenly. Ilona called the BBFC after she was really fed up with it, and she said, if you don't unbend it immediately, we're gonna sew your mouth to the anuses <laughs> of your whole crew and put you behind a, g a person with Crohn's disease. <laughs> Enjoy it. And Hey, I hope you're not time wasting, you. I've got a dozen people waiting to look at this place. Hey, come on, let's get this lease signed, eh? Because your mother is very worried about you. You 
keeps on talking about a centipede with 12 people. <laughs> what does that mean? The centipede can be considered a phallic symbol. Centipedes are very aggressive creatures. Yeah, please! Their bite can be very painful. What are you looking at? Maybe he's connecting the pain that a centipede inflicts with the psychological and sexual abuse inflicted on him by his father. There's nothing to worry about. I'm sure it's just a passing phase. Hmm? This isn't right, Martin. What you're doing? It's wrong. <laughs> Welcome back to the semi stage, Mr. Tom Six. Thank you, thank you. The sick mind. Um, and we've got loads of folks here from the cast and crew, so please, Tom, welcome to the stage. Please, uh, cast, my lovely cast, come forward, please. Huh? Uh, okay. So don't forget, it's actually Peter's birthday, isn't it? Where's Peter? Peter, Peter, where are you? In the toilet. Oh, in the oh. toilet? Well, when he comes back, we're going to wish him happy birthday. Yeah, that's a good idea. Okay, Tom, um, yes. is that the first time you've seen the cut version? And is this is the first time I see the, some the, see the cut version. And I'm okay with it. Of course, in the in my original version, uh, you see lots more shit, uh, <laughs> barbed wire, and uh, lots more teeth uh, smashing out, okay? But uh, yeah, that's the... The consequences of her BDFC in your country, and I can't do anything about it. But uh, uh, I, I think you got a good impression. Eh? <laughs> and how do you go about finding all these lovely ladies and gentlemen for the movie? Yeah, these these actors are amazing. Uh, when you make a film like this, uh, you totally depend on your actors, and uh, they're uh, yeah willing to do this for you. It's my uh, crazy brainwave to make films like this. But you find you have to find very talented actors but also want to yeah, perform like this. Eh? Some went to a theater school and then it, it, they showed her yeah, the first film and they're attached to an asshole but uh, and not many actors want to do that so I, I really compliment the, the, the braveness of these people and, uh, and when I did the, the casting in London together with, uh, with Ilona they were absolutely the best uh, around so I'm very happy with them. Did you always intend to make it in black and white? Was that from the uh, I wanted to make a totally different uh, film than the first one. The first one has uh, clinical uh, colors. It's all uh, shot uh, with uh, with steady cams, and it uh, really fitted the story of Dr. Hyde. This time, I wanted the complete opposite look. I wanted a dirty film. It's all handheld, uh, and I took away all the colors because that really helped the story of uh, of Martin. And also, I ch uh, yeah, I chose for a totally different uh, character than. Uh, than uh, Dr. Heiter, because he's so brilliant, how can you uh, top him? So, uh, yeah, I chose uh, the great uh, Lawrence. Well, uh, Dieter is uh, yeah, tall and thin. Lawrence is not. <laughs> and that's also, uh, yeah. and that's one of the men. How, how did you find Lawrence? I mean, um, how, how was yeah. the casting for that? Oh, that was in incredible. I uh, I uh, saw about. Right to the end of the rainbow. Yeah. Said, Give us a go, little man. Give us a go. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> you can talk, eh? I said, I'll give you my gold, but what I'll do is I'll read your film and you'll get your gold from that. <laughs> Absolutely. It's great, eh? Yeah, he came in and I thought, my God, look at his face. And we put a camera on him and his eyes and he was radiant. Eh? And then, uh, of course, we wanted to see if he had uh, all the good stuff in store. So uh, I asked him uh, to rape the centipede for me. And Lawrence took a chair and made wild laugh to it. And uh, I, was, uh, I was in love with him uh, immediately. So uh, that was my guy. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. One question I've got 
I know that you name various ones after the fight they point. Could you let us know which one's Alan, which one's Greg, and which one's Paul, as far as the parents are going in? Hey, what about me? You never met uh, me. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm Paul. Yeah. <laughs> Tim? Yeah, with the Fry guys, yeah? Are they? Yeah. Ian couldn't be here now. He's in uh, in America shooting a film, and we've got them all then now. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Over there. Yeah. Yeah. Lord, hello. Lawrence, when you were. Um, thinking about taking the film, was there anything in the script that made you think, oh, maybe I shouldn't? Did you have any any reservations after reading the script? I mean, it's a pretty hardcore film. Well, there the, the wasn't a script. I mean, yeah. I, what, what there was was, um, I knew that it was going to be the lead role and that it was the sequel to Human Centipede. Uh, and so I saw the first film in the morning and then an hour and a half later, I was in a room with Tom, who then described the whole film scene by scene, moment by moment, camera angle by camera angle, and we kind of discussed what Martin was like and his relationship to other people and so on. Uh, and he, he, Tom basically took me through the whole plot as it appears now, you know. So, um, and whilst we were talking, we were talking about kind of different references. So I knew it was going to be like. Um, you know those kind of Japanese uh, lone dove syndrome kind of uh, films like uh, the All Night Long trilogy and so on. I knew it was going to be that kind of thing where somebody that's kind of put upon then takes very violent revenge. So I was looking forward to that. I mean, you know, I grew up reading Starburst and Fangoria and so on. So I was looking forward to being in a gory film, you know. So thank you, thank you. So, I mean, the only scene that I had, uh, was concerned about was just uh, the rape scene with Emma, who plays the tail uh, segment. Uh, so, uh, and it was just more about making sure that Emma was kind of fine emotionally and uh, physically during that scene. <laughs> And, 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 yeah, uh, that she could take the bar by <laughs> Do you say something else? I don't think that in a horrible way. Do you know, um, I was thinking a lot recently about the preparation for the rape scene, and it's all completely blank, really, when I think back. I really didn't have to do too much sort of acting, really, because Lawrence just went for it. He was so amazing. He made it so realistic. He was pulling my hair, scraping the flesh off my lap. So thank you very much, Lawrence. Yeah, I, I was just pulling at her talk. I wasn't actually yanking it. He lied. Try it, try it, try it. You, you said go for it. I did. Middle left. What can we expect from the third? Uh, yeah, uh, the third one. Uh, the script is finished, I'm going to shoot it next year uh, America. It's going to be the, the final No More Centipedes for me after that. And in the end, all the three films will literally uh, fit together. So you have one four and a half hour film, they fit together like a human centipede. And I won't spoil uh, what happens yet, but uh, it will upset a lot of people again. So, <laughs> enjoy. I just did as I was told, or rather what I was asked, it's Mr. Six is a gentleman. I just got down on my hands and knees and put my mouth on the other put man's ass and just <laughs> acted out the scene. Uh, believe I'm me. very good at taking direction. <laughs> believe me, when you're, when you're crawling around in all that dirt, and it was dirty in that place, and it was cold, and it was the first time that I think that any of us have ever been naked on film, or indeed naked in front of people we've never met before, I can tell you, the sex is the last thing on your mind. You just I've lived not, a full life. <laughs> you're just not looking at anybody else, really. You're just thinking about, I'm going to have to spend so many days on my hands and knees, crawling about. And it, it was, some of it was really hard filming, but we had a good time and we were a good company. And we stayed together. And, uh, well, I think you've seen the results. <laughs> that is a really good point about the auditions, though, is that we were called in in like twos and threes, or at least I was. Um, so it wasn't like you were getting put in a room on your own, having just seen this film the morning before. 
Oh. <laughs> Not, some of us were brought in, in groups, uh, but yeah, I, from personally it was a lot more comfortable even though you were asked to get on your hands and knees and pretend to be conjoined like you just seen in the film. I'm going to throw the microphone up this end. We have a few words from you guys as well. Well, the night before my audition, I was arrested by the British police and put in the back of a paddy wagon. Yeah. And they repossessed my car, and I had no sleep. And I am a musician and a singer, and I'd spent the night in a pub singing, and there was a fight in the pub. So I went into the audition with no sleep, no car, and Tom just said, get on the ground, and I went, whatever. <laughs> Even though I don't get on the ground on all fours on in the film, I did in the audition. So I wanted. Bitch, bitch, bitch. Yeah, I mean, um, as has been said, you know, that film was incredibly gory, but did you also intend it to be so much more tongue-in-cheek than the first film? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's my way of thinking. Eh? I never intend uh, to put humor in it. It's just my, my way of, uh, of writing scripts. Eh? And uh, lots of people were very disappointed when they see, saw the first one, that they missed out of, on all the, the shit flying around and so on, and I really wanted to give the audience it full force now, eh? so, uh, and it's almost uh, Mel Brooks, eh? it's the, 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 the shit is really frying around. You saw a little bit of it, but uh, yeah, <laughs> it is. White, black, man with top four more cut. Make it a good one. Is that me? Yep. Yeah. Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> um, obviously, first film, big fan of it. Second film, obviously you got cut by the baby FC, sorry to, you know, know that and stuff, but what, like, where do you plan to go with the second one? Because obviously you said the, the second one was going to make the, the, the third one, sorry. The third one was going to make the second one look like a Disney film. So where do you plan to go for with that? I hope it's going to be ultimate. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, it will, it will have, be a completely different uh, angle again, eh? like, like two is totally different than one. Three is going to be a totally different film again. And uh, while one was psychological, two was gory, and three will uh, have a whole other element of uh, uh, of extremity, extremity. So uh, that's just uh, yeah, up to the audience what they think is worst. And I won't spoil it yet, but it's going to be uh, crazy, pretty crazy. <laughs> Thank you. This has got nothing to do with my question, but first things first, fucking fair play on the film. It was like the razor head meets the flash. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. As a significant, <coughs> significant and harmless as Crash. But the important thing is, I'm asking this question about two and a half minutes too early, because the BBFC have had a period of victory here, a period of victory rather. And the question is, if you guys had decided to show us the full sequence as you had intended, what would have happened? Would everybody in this room have been sentenced to transportation to the colonies where we might have been able to watch a slightly fuller version of the film? Tom has no idea. You've stumped him there. Um, I think I think from from my perspective on it um, is. I think the BBC, Big FC had a real problem with this movie because it's a sequel unlike any other. It's about the effects and influence of movie. Um, so their initial knee-jerk reaction to it was, uh, we cannot cut this movie because the plot and the story of the film is about a guy taking, watching movies to the very extreme. So I think what they've censored or what edited out of the film which is just literally a couple of minutes, is a token gesture on their behalf. So I think it's a battle won that the film actually went onto the screen in any way, shape or form tonight and in the future. That's it, really. I mean, that's it. Anyway, we'll talk later. <laughs> Another couple of questions. That man there. Uh, I have just one question about the third film. Is Tom Six going to be a character, a perpetrator, a victim, or does he not even show up? Uh, I give them the surprise. <laughs> 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 
Uh, maybe, maybe not. Maybe I bring people back, maybe not. But uh, the, I, I uh, leave open answers eh, in part one and two, and they will be answered in part three. Part three, yeah, we'll give all the answers. <laughs> hey, maybe two more, and that's it. That man there. Yep. Hey, I'm, I'm interested in the cast ever went to Tom and asked him about the subtext or, or what he was trying to say here, and if so, what did he say to you? Yeah. Um, to be honest, there wasn't really time at the time. You were sort of brought into the room and manacled and derobed and put on the floor. Um, I kind of like, and the great thing about Tom is he talked about it so, so in such a chilled out way. I mean, I mentioned before, like, just like, yeah, and you're going to do this, and then you're going to be spitting this up, and you're going to be bleeding from here. And it is, it's, there, there was no time to really consider it, from my part at least. Uh, for myself, um, I think I think Tom sold the, the idea to me very well, and I never had a problem with it. Um, I just went with it. Uh, I, I I think he, he double guessed a lot of people, and some people to this day don't like that. And he double guessed people in the idea of I don't know how many of you remember when the, the Peter Schaffer's play Equus came out, and all the hoo ha that came out about that. Uh, it's this constant assumption that you are sitting in an audience and whatever you watch, you're going to go away and copy. Uh, it's, it's insanity. We're going back to censorship again. But the subtext, I mean, I read, I read the script and the whole idea about you know, the, the regeneration of torture. Obviously, it's clear that he's been tortured before. But the thing you've got to ask yourselves is right at the end, you see him in that little cubicle, you hear the baby crying. Was he dreaming it? Was it everything happened? Did it really happen? Or was it just his fantasy? You work it out. We didn't need to act. <laughs> no, when Tom, when Tom called me in, he just asked me to be myself, like mad and violent and you know, and aggressive, so I just give him four hell. I actually spat in his face accidentally, didn't I, Tom? <laughs> but he liked it, so, you know. <laughs> so I thought, well, this is a man to work for, so we all did it. And we got down, and we got, got dirty, and we got bloody. That's for sure. <laughs> I guess about the subtext, as an actor, what's great about this film is it's so raw. And everyone sitting here is thinking, you know, what would you do in that situation? It's less about the subtext and more about just pushing humans. You know, for my part, the giving birth. Actually, what should be banned were the actual uh, videos I watched of real life births on the internet. That was the most horrific bit. Um, but yeah, I think Tom would agree. It's, it's really, you watched it. What do you think the subtext was? You know, what was your reaction? And I think it really pushes the audience to think. I mean, I think uh, when, because we were talking about how Marty uh, fits into the story and how he, how he relates and what his background is in, in our casting, uh, we were talking about how like, the first film is very much about the tropes of the horror film and kind of a satire or, you know, t taking that to absurd levels. Whereas this film is very much about the kind of the tropes of reception or the different kind of reception narratives you get, especially. Yeah, I mean, the tabloid narrative of uh, somebody copying a, a film in order to inflict violence on somebody is, is the main one. But then there's also kind of the, uh, the the macho element of horror fandom kind of demanding more gore and then kind of be careful what you wish for kind of thing is uh, Tom's answer to that, I suppose. But also, like, people have talked about the first film, about it being about uh, consumerism, or you know, having a subtext about consumerism, and this is the film where it all falls apart. It comes apart, it wraps and splits at the seams, which is timely if you're following that uh, metaphorical uh, narrative. Last one, last question. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so, Tom, apart from Centipede 3, what's next? What's your movie? Can you tell us either the title and some bits about it? 
Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, well, Elon and I are really into the horror genre uh, now, and I really want to explore this uh, territory some more. I think I've got some original ideas uh, up my sleeve, and I already want to make original films. Uh, so many uh, films are done over and over and again, and I don't understand why they do it. It's a waste of energy, uh, I think. But I'm going to make uh, a film that is set in LA. It's called uh, The Onania Club. And uh, it has a, a completely uh, yeah, different uh, uh, subject than the centipede films, but it will definitely uh, make people uh, yeah, think and talk again. So it's called Onania Club. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much, Tom. Thank you very much, cast of Human Centipede, full sequence. Hope you enjoyed it. See you later. Well,